Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Far Lands or Bust. Wolfie wasted no time barking there, and, well, hello. Yes, indeed, I do, I do indeed wait for Wolfie to bark to start the episode, which can be quite, ooh, hello, burning zombies, can be quite the, uh, quite the wait sometimes, because he does like to take his sweet old time. I'm not sure what the, the random barking mechanism is in Minecraft, but uh, it can be quite uh, delayed sometimes, but that one was quick. So a quick start to episode 326 here of Far Lands or Bust on Wednesday, February 12th, 2014. Indeed. Woof, he's barky today. Barky? <laughs> Charles Barkley. No, uh, <laughs> so we're continuing on and you guys continue to donate to Child's Play Charity at farlandsbus.com. We're at $169,779.50. All of that going directly to Child's Play Charity. Let there be no confusion. That is a, the official Child's Play Charity donation widget that's on the homepage of farlandsorbus.com. So when you donate, things just go straight. Oh, nice, nice jump shot. Go straight to Child's Play Charity. I never touch or see or smell or, or caress a single penny <laughs> of that. And it all goes to help uh, get... Oh, well, I've said this so many times I'm tripping over my own tongue. Goes to get... Toys, books, games, and other things to kids in hospitals around the world. Help them recover better. It, it, studies show, studies show that the kids who, who are able to be kids tend to have higher spirits and it, it helps reduce complications and helps them recover from whatever short or long-term reason they might be in, in a hospital or, or similar environment. So that's what Child's Play Charity does, and that's what we've been supporting all of this time. Indeed. And I hope we can have a, a, a proverbial explosion of donations when Flabathon comes around. Currently scheduled for March 1st. Whoop, there we go. March 1st, Saturday. I'm gonna do a live stream, Far Lands or Bust non-stop for a certain amount of time, and then at the end of which, I will finally, after almost a year and a half, press F3, which will give us our coordinates. To see how far we have actually walked here in Far Lands or Bust. Since August of 2012, during the last Flabathon, when we saw we were at 699,000 blocks from spawn. Cool stuff indeed. I talked about, uh, last episode I talked about the car show and cars, and I also mentioned last week that the, the new season of Top Gear was back, and there's a second episode this past Sunday, and I watched it via means, which I will not discuss, <laughs> but uh, it was a bit better than the first episode. It was a bit more of your standard Top Gear formula. There were multiple segments as opposed to just the one segment. There was the, uh, the only thing missing was the, the Stig. The Stig was not taking the one of the, the featured cars around the track for a test. Uh, the, the main car they had was the new McLaren P1, uh, but they were apparently teased at the end that they're saving that for a head-to-head -head kind of lap times with the Stig with the new Porsche? Is that a new Porsche that, that they're testing it against? I don't know. I think that's what they said, but, but otherwise, kind of glad the... The standard Top Gear format is back on. As opposed to, like I said, that first episode, so... Thumbs up is kind of... I suppose Sunday is when I went to the, uh... Is when I went to the, uh, car show, so to have... Top Gear to be able to watch just that Sunday kept me in the... The vehicular mood, if you will. <laughs> vehicular. And, uh... So that, that was interesting. Well, of course, there were no McLaren P1s. There was an F1, or is it called the F1? Or the... Yeah, right? No. What? What's the other one? The previous McLaren. There was one of those uh, in the same little... I don't know my McLarens. The the supercar area where the, uh, the Veyron was as well, and Aston Martins and Ferraris and Lamborghinis and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, but anyway, 
Just, just felt like doing a follow-up, because I was concerned about the new season of Top Gear in the last episode. Um, what else? Crocodiles. Crocodiles uh, have now been found that they, they're able to climb trees. Crocodiles can climb trees. So, have fun with that, people living in tropical climates. <laughs> you get you get to have warm weather year-round, so, so you might as well have to deal with some sort of negative, like... Crocodiles in your trees. <laughs> uh, so I, I kind of, I just visited uh, the the Google News homepage before I started recording to see if there were any interesting stories, and that was the one that popped out at me. Crocodiles climbing trees. Uh, but anyway, I guess I can get to uh, I can get to uh, some of the questions from from people who've donated Child's Play charity. Scavros. Asks, if you could learn and master one skill, what would you learn? Life. How to be life be? <laughs> no, uh, astronaut. How to be an astronaut. I, I would have to have much practice in space, so send me to space so I can master that one skill of being an astronaut. Um, realistically though, uh, hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, I suppose for, like, day-to-day -day life, being an excellent cook would be nice. Uh, but... Yeah, you know, not not really... I, don't, I, I wouldn't find much fun in that, I suppose. I always... It's, it's very random and not really applicable. It's kind of obscure. But I tried in my early 20s to learn or teach myself how to do uh, pinstriping. Automotive. Speaking of cars, automotive pinstriping. You see that a lot on, I, you know, I was really into the old hot rods and things like that. Pinstriping is, you know, the, the very basic is, you know, having a, a single or a double stripe down the side of the body of a car. More specifically, there's really neat designs. Uh, that could be on the, the hoods, the sides, the door handles, you know, as, as much or as little uh, detail or extravagance as you would want, but if you look at old kind of the, the hot rod style cars, pinstriping is a big thing, and it's all done. I, I bought all the equipment, I was trying things out, uh, my older sister had like a really crappy old uh, Dodge Omni, <laughs> which are the, uh, there were hatchbacks. Uh, that uh, finally died at one point, so she was uh, going to donate it. I don't know how many other places, you know, different different charities will actually take old cars in any condition, uh, and then they auction them off and then use the money for the charity. I'm not sure how exactly it works, uh, but uh, it was going to be... She was going to donate it anyway, so I decided to, to pinstripe her car, uh, which was really ridiculous <laughs> to have a pinstriped, rusty old, you know, late 80s Dodge Omni. But, uh, but yeah, I tested on there, and little, you could take little uh, glass panes or, or uh, you know, just anything and everything you can just try to pinstripe. But anyway, my point was, it's all done by hand. Uh, there's very special, specialized pinstriping uh, brushes with very long... Uh, thin brushes that uh, and it's all done by hand a lot of you know if you if you buy a car nowadays uh, And it has stripes or pinstripes or something. It's either done by a machine or it's like an applied uh, What's the word I'm looking for like a sticker an adhesive kind of stripe that they put down the side of the car so not you know obviously the cheap mass-produced version, but the the actual Legit pinstriping is done with paint. It's usually uh, a very specialized paint. The the main, I think there's probably others, but the main company it's called, uh, or the main, I'm not sure if it's the company or just the style of paint. It's called one shot paint, and I believe it's it's leaded paint, which is obviously not great in large quantities. But I believe because it's leaded paint, it is the right consistency to be able to to, to hold uh, it's lettering lettering paint it's also in, in in addition to pinstriping it's sign lettering which is another lost art form uh, you know people used to before there were mass you know the vinyl signs and uh, mass produced large format printers and things like that people hand printed 
painted signs uh, oh. for your, your various businesses or, or, or the sides of vans or, or billboards and things like that. So it's, it's sign lettering paint. Uh, I had a bunch of that stuff and I tried it out. It's very difficult. You need to have both a very steady hand and you have to be a little oh. bit very sure of where you're putting the paint and it's very difficult, but I kind of gave that up. It's kind of just something that I gave up. It was one of those things I think I really enjoyed cars, but because I... Oh god! Oh, it's raining! We're being rained upon! No, we're not! It's over there! <laughs> this is like an episode. This is like a... Well, not the episode, but it's like the Truman Show. <laughs> Are we like... Why is it not raining here? But... <laughs> That's hilarious! I almost don't want to sleep. Am I in a desert? Technically? I suppose. I'm in sand. Uh, hold on. Things are gonna start spawning, but... We're being rained upon! When was the last time we had rain on our heads? Alright, let's go to sleep. <laughs> let's get up here, go to sleep, and I will see you as the rain parts in the morning. And... A Moisture falling from the skyness. Ha! That was great. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Well done, Minecraft. Well done. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess this, even though it's more of a beach, it was technically a, a desert, so it wasn't raining. Well, a good thing that my my bed wasn't getting all soggy and gross. <laughs> that was great. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, like I said, pinstriping, it just seemed, seems like a very specific, you know, almost like a uh, tattoo artist is kind of a very specific, it, it kind of is more of a personality type skill than it is, you know, anybody could, could end up, well, not anybody, but, you know, you can have certain skills like, oh, I'm good at basketball, or oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good at cooking, like I mentioned before, but like pinstriping is, is a really obscure kind of thing. And, oh, I was beginning to say before it rained that uh, I was into cars. Oh god, that's a creeper. Gotta go. That guy enjoyed the rain. They sprout in the rain, don't you know? Hi. Bye. Uh, uh, yeah, I was really into cars, but I didn't know much about being a mechanic or fixing up cars, nor could I afford a car of my own. So I felt like, because I was artistic and I enjoyed painting and the fine arts is what I was going to school for, blah, blah, blah. I felt that that might be like my one in with the, the, the classic car culture. You know, being as I can't own a car, I can't fix up a car, I, I, could, I could paint or customize a car, you know, so that was kind of my my idea, I suppose, uh, but uh, like I said, kind of failed at that, it, just like anything. I'm sure if I had practiced day and night and all the time, I, I would have gotten great, but uh, just one of those things kind of gave up, uh, like learning the guitar or, or stuff like that, but, uh, but yeah, I suppose just one random skill, that's the one I would choose, uh, so... Yeah, and as you know, you, you kind of think about it. oh, it's just like overnight the the skill fairy would come and and give you you know the hundred percent of the skill right away. I don't know if that's the way I would like it. It's kind of the work up to mastering the skill. I think is the most interesting part. Once you master the skill, I'm sure it's guys not boring, but it's just it, the challenge is gone. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I read it. Oh, that, yeah, this is perfect for what I'm talking about. I'm telling myself in my head, but not telling you guys listening. Uh, there was an... Oh, I forgot where I saw it. It must have been a quote in a blog or on the Tumblr post or something that, uh, you know, the reason... The reason when we're first starting out at a skill, whether it be anything, painting, doing Let's Plays, doing uh, some sort of subject in school, uh, the reason why a lot of people give up to begin with is, 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 you know, because they see themselves not being very good at it, even like graphic design. I never thought I was as good as other people or stuff like that. Um, but the reason you should keep going is because you have the taste, you have the excellent taste to be able to see that you suck. <laughs> you know, to be able to determine that what you're making is bad, you know, 
is kind of the first step to having and mastering a skill or an art form or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of that, that is the big hurdle that you have to overcome is being able to accept that you suck, but the fact that you know that you suck <laughs> is, is the reason you should continue because eventually you will realize that your good taste will serve you in getting better and better and better. I think, you know, it was worded much, much better than that when I read it, but uh, I just thought that was really interesting. I've never seen it put that way. Uh, you know, you always just hear, oh, you're, it's, it's, it's hard, so people give up, and that's why blah, 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 blah. Uh, not necessarily, it's, it's not the difficulty level, or it's not that you're comparing yourselves to others. It's just you're comparing your own work to your own uh, uh, tastes, which, uh, you know, depending on, on, on the skill you're trying to, to gain, might be impeccable taste. You can pick out of a lineup the great stuff that you want to be able to be producing, but uh, uh, you know you yourself don't make, m meet your own standard. So you know you'll also see the opposite of that as people who who think they're great from day one, but they're actually terrible. They don't have great taste, so they will never master that skill. Kind of a, a flip side there. Woo! I'm all being motivational and stuff today. What's up with that? <laughs> um. So, yeah, hmm, that was... Well said, Kurt, good job. Regurgitating something you saw elsewhere on the internet. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. okay. Uh, anyway, thanks for that question. And uh, we're gonna go on to another one here from Jesse Marie. Asked, Have you considered playing Minecraft maybe five days a week? I'm assuming you're speaking of Far Lands of Bust Minecraft. Uh, to possibly gain more ground in Far Lands of Bust. Uh, I've considered it, but I don't think it's that good of an idea. I used to actually play less. You know, I've, I've, I've tried to back and forth find, uh, you know, a good rate of videos. I think at one point I did try the everyday thing, but only like one day Minecraft episodes or two day Minecraft episodes. That didn't work. Of course, early, early on in the series. When this was the only series I had going on my YouTube channel, I did a lot more. Or I would record, before I started the Far Lands journey, I would record three or four episodes in one go and then split them up into different episodes, uh, like like your standard Let's Play. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think, as I've said many times before, it's not necessarily about the speed at which I, I cover distance or get to the Far Lands, quote-unquote. It's about the journey, and now more so about the the Child's Play charity fundraiser and, and stuff like that. But also, I have to consider that this is a a. Oh, that just looked weird. I'm like, what is that thing underneath that cow? It's the the flower is jittering, but the cow is not with the uh, the terrain around him. Uh, it it's it's not about all that stuff. But I also have to consider that this is a. You know, this is what am I trying to look at? Entertainment? This is this is this isn't just I'm not trying to, to break a world record or get the Guinness books or anything like that if you know on my own. If that was the case, I would just sit here and as people have mentioned, why doesn't he just tape a a, a weight to his W key or, or make a program that, that makes the player walk in one direction and jump over obstacles? But you know, I've seen a lot of those comments in a lot of the articles about Far Lands of Bus that have been coming out. But uh uh, it, it's 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 a show for you guys. It's it's for entertainment purposes, and you know, just like if uh, you know your favorite show came out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that would get repetitive over a while. Not only that, but they would run out of content really quick. So that's why most shows are on a weekly schedule. You know, uh, talking like network TV type type stuff. Um. So I kind of had to space it out, and a little bit ago is when I kind of set on and I found what I felt like was a sweet spot of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three Minecraft days, uh, like 35 minutes, was a good way not to totally spam your guys' inboxes or sub boxes on YouTube, but to keep your interest and also my own interest and also allow me to do other videos on my channel, since I might not have the greatest of, say, video making endurance is perhaps some other Let's Players who can get three, four, five videos out a day. It's, it's my own, my own failing, I suppose. 
but, uh, you know, for a long time, and now that the buzz has kind of died down, Far Lands or Busts is not uh, the greatest series on my channel as far as views and, and what I can say is my full-time job as a as a gaming YouTuber, so I, I do have to supplement it with these other things. Uh, I mean, obviously, that would be great if I could do that, or maybe I would... If that was the case where I was doing Far Lands or Bus five days out of the out of the week, uh, I would I would make a special channel for it, or I would spin off my other stuff to another channel, you know, Kurt Gaming or you know whatever, and just have this be the Far Lands or Bus channel where I upload five days a week. But I, I you know I'm not that's not something. Whoa, that was some parkour there to get up here. Parkour to you. Uh, <laughs> So that's not, uh, you know, I, 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 I certainly considered that as a suggestion, uh, but uh, I, I'm not, that, I feel like I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place right now, and I feel like you guys enjoy this kind of format too. Gives a little bit of a breather, just like we, uh, you know, haha, -ha, segue, we started a new season of Mindcrack UHC. The same reason we do those every other day, and most YouTube gaming series is if they're consistent like this are scheduled for every other day is to kind of give whoa this is too high kind of give people a chance maybe there's a lot of viewers who don't check the uh, their subscriptions every day it gives them a chance if they miss the initial day to, to catch up the next day in terms of in terms of uh, UHC, there's so many perspectives, you know, there's over, I don't know how many hours, six hours of footage from all of us. It gives people who want to watch other people's footage multiple days to, to, to catch up. So, so yeah, I feel like this is a good standard for Far Lands or Bust at least, but I appreciate your donation and your question and let's go to sleep and continue in the morning. <laughs> And no rain that time, Ness. Ah. <laughs> uh, nice big old mountain range coming up, though. How you doing for health, Wolfie? You're doing pretty good today. Just careful, watch your step here. Oh, I saw what you were about to do. Let's go this way. <laughs> Whoa, I was about to do the same thing right there. Ah, uh -huh. indeed. <laughs> Goofy dog. Let's see here. Oh, I got, uh, there must be a character limit on the comments when you donate to Child's Play Charity, where you can ask questions. So, Tofupup2 actually donated three times, thank you very much, in order to have space to write all of these questions that uh, they wanted to ask. Uh, pretty simple questions, so it's not like it's going to take up multiple episodes, I don't think, but uh, thank you very much for those very generous three times donations. Hope up, up to uh, the first question. Your diamond sword looks like it's almost kaput. Yeah, it's about maybe one fifth or one sixth remaining on its durability. Uh, the question continues. Have you had it since the beginning? Yes, this is the diamond sword of spawn pointiness, meaning these diamonds I found at the spawn area back, I believe it was probably episode 9, I got lost and spent the night in a cave and was caving and found my first and only diamonds on this entire Let's Play. I believe it was seven diamonds? Seven diamonds, I believe I found, because I made this and then I also made the diamond pick. But then I left two diamonds behind because my, my thought process was, well, if I die and I lose all my diamond goods, at least I can have some diamonds here back at my spawn point that I can recover. <laughs> Lo and behold, <laughs> it's uh, three years later and 326 episodes and those diamonds are never being seen again. Uh, so yeah, I had the diamond pick, which was running very low, and I left, I buried in a time capsule underneath the first F3 monument at 292202. Uh, but yeah, this one I've had since the very beginning, the diamond sword of spawn pointiness. 
mm, continues. If it breaks, will you go looking for more diamonds? I don't know. Ooh, whoa. Let's Wolfie go away from here. No, 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 no. You don't need to see what was over there. I, I realize your penchant for. No, no, no. This way. This way, you goob. Penchant for dropping down massive falls. There you go. Spooky noises. Uh, would you go mining for more diamonds? I don't know. I don't think so. I have an overabundance. Oh god. I have an overabundance of iron? So I believe iron tools would be... would suffice for the future. Um, and yeah, I've always been back and forth as to whether or not I should... Keep the diamond sword in my inventory, or just like I did with the diamond pickaxe, lava, the diamond pickaxe, bury it as a time capsule under one of the future kind of monuments or, or milestones. Uh, my my previous opinion was that it's it's a diamond sword. It must be used as a diamond sword. It would be a shame to just you know preserve it. It must protect myself and Wolfie in the adventures and if it does break then it will be perhaps that will be the monument on the day it breaks go dang it what i'm getting all turned around and bam i'm getting bamboozled by this terrain woof wolfie agrees this is a bad way to go speaking of wolfie uh i do need some wood hold on a minute woof wolfie wolfie knows he's like i've been telling you man all these trees you're passing up get some get some wood I'll do for now. Oh wow, look at that! I like that. It looks like uh, one of the, you know, like the, the Badlands or... Uh, ha! Ha! That's not good. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, let's go down the side here. You know, like, uh, what are those things called? Kind of plateaus or little structures in the desert. Even though it's not necessarily a desert. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think at this point that I, that risking going down to Diamond Lair to do caving to find diamonds is, is, is a necessary risk. I don't believe that would, that would be it. But, but I don't know. We're only 326 episodes in. My mind might change in another 326 episodes. Who knows? Uh, another question they asked. Tofopopopup2 or whatever. Tofopopup2. Or tofu pup. Tofu pup! <laughs> God, I am terrible at denunciating things. Um, have you ever thought about the astronomy in Minecraft? Yes, I have. There's an episode a long time ago, I think before episode 100 even, where I was talking about the stars and the moon and how it's perpetually in kind of a, a full moon state where the sun is opposite, or the moon technically is opposite the sun. So the, the moon should constantly be full, but also it's like exactly opposite, so it should actually, the moon should be in eclipse at all times, but that is assuming that the planet Minecraft is in the same setup as planet Earth. Uh, you know, also people have said I'm not actually walking west because the sun in these previous versions didn't actually set in the west, but I'm going with the current real-world model of where the sun sets, that's the west. So that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm walking west and, 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 and you can't change my mind. So that's my that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've discussed that. Maybe, maybe, you know, the moon obviously doesn't orbit the planet because it's always in that position so perhaps actually uh, the moon is in some sort of geo not geosynchronous well yeah either geosynchronous orbit with with the planet Minecraft planet or it is in some sort of uh, fixed oh, what's the word I'm looking for oh there's a word for that type of orbit what is it Wolfie what is it uh, no, that's not it. Um... Oh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue! It's totally right there on the tip of my thumb. It's, uh... They're talking about putting spacecraft there. It's in a, uh... Where it's locked. Dag! Nabbit! What is the word? Wolfie! Uh, no, that's not it either. Uh, um... 
Oh my gosh, it's like right there. This is gonna bother me for the rest of the episode. Bleh. It's in a orbit. A uh It's like named after somebody famous in science. It's fixed in a... Oh, Lagrange! Lagrange or Lagrange point. That's the word where it's actually as if it were orbiting behind the, the, the planet. But in the same orbit at the same speed. Yeah, I don't know if that would be possible in a two-system, you know, planet-moon type of situation. It might be. I know that you can... There are points around our moon on Earth that would be Lagrange points within the moon, or I'm sorry, within the sun, or within the Earth moon system that has really no general influence of the sun. But, uh, but yeah, that, that was my other hypothesis. I mean, also in the, does the moon, does my moon in Far Lands of Bust? I haven't looked at it in a while. I don't think we have phases of our moon here, do we? Good grief. Uh, the phases of the moon in the current version, uh, and possibly this version, are all wrong because the moon never... Ooh, nice place you got here, Minecraft. Uh, the moon never moves in the sky. You know, the reason we have moon phases in our little system in, in real life is because the moon orbits our planet and then gets the different... Uh, you know, it gets illuminated by the sun at different points of its orbit. Whereas that doesn't change on the moon in Minecraft, there's no... It's like, why does it have phases then? Uh, so that doesn't make sense. And I've also, as you'll notice, notice or maybe you remember from Mindcrack last season, the server, I made an observatory. The Royal Observatory. I was kind of pointing out different constellations, but the... And I know there are mods. There are mods to make the... There are actual planets or, or, you know, constellations and more accurate representations of the sky. But I believe it's kind of just a static texture is all, all it really is. Uh, but yeah, we found kind of different constellations and stuff. So yes, I have I have thought about it and actually discussed it in the past. Uh, but, but not really... Speaking of saving the, the golden sword of spawn pointiness, I'm using it to chop down foliage. Uh... But yeah, I've not really n not considered it with too much seriousness because that serious. No, Wolfie, that was my fault actually. Probably, although I did kind of r rub against, and then he makes it down just fine. That's typical. <laughs> oh, dang it. Um, so yeah, that that that's my take on on the Minecraft astronomy. I suppose you could say. Oh, here's a nice nice place for us to. To set up shop. Right, Wolfie? After you've pushed me off a cliff. Alright, let's uh, get out of the way. I'm gonna make a little bit of a, a beach for you to sit on. Let's do... Yeah, have a seat. And do that. Oh, those spooky noises aren't great, but let's... Let's dig in here for the final hidey hole. And there's, uh, there's one more question from... What I've now determined, tofu pup, <laughs> uh, that I will get to in the next episode. So let's look forward to that. Oop, torch. As I wrap this one up, thank you very much for watching. You know those those little likes and subscriptions and shares and whatnot help me out and help other people find Fire Lines or Bust, and hopefully other people will be gracious enough to give to Child's Play Charity, which is a great cause. You can learn more about them at childsplaycharity.org. If you have any have any questions about them. One, two, three. Very nice. Beep, beep, beep. Very nice. Let's do that. Uh, I need a boat as well. So, yeah, this has been episode 326 of Farlands or Bust. Thank you very much for watching. Careful of those tree climbing crocodiles. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. <laughs>